Hello guys and oh god, I feel like I'm about to sneeze as soon as I start recording. Yeah. <coughs> Alright. Um, Nordic Energy. This day's drink review. Um, never heard of this brand before, but let's try it out. I assume this is just gonna be like the the basic drink dr uh, energy drink flavor which i think someone told me is a guarana like that is like like the basic bitch one which i really like yeah and it smells like that mm. so let's see if it's any good Yeah, no. It is not. It's... Oh god, how would, I, how would I explain this? It tastes like, you know, a Red Bull or a Monster or whatever. But the aftertaste is like... I don't know, would you call this like sweet bitter? No, not bitter. I think it's a bit too sour. Yeah, that's probably the case. It's too sour and too sweet. Uh, which, I mean, I feel like this would be good if I just added water to it to dilute it. I think if this, if you dilute this, it's probably gonna taste fine. So that's probably what I'm gonna do after I'm done with this. Um, drink review and comments and answers because that's what I plan on doing actually. Just read a bunch of comments because I think it's been a month since I've done, <coughs> done a video like this. Well, luckily, there has been that many comments um, that I haven't, you know, already answered in, you know, like. By typing, well, typing like that is incorrect. More like this, I guess, since I've been using my phone. Uh, but let's see. Uh, let's start here with the Shupa, Sh the Shupa Shup Strawberry and Cream Flavor Cream Flavor Drink Review. Uh, by Dark Mental Master. Used to have used to have lollipops of these when I was a kid. And yeah, I think I've also d done that. Also uh, done that. Also think I've had. Oh Jesus Christ! In case you haven't noticed already, my mind is just so. You can really tell in the Star Wars Jedi, the Last Fallen Order, whatever. I like, forgot. I recorded nine episodes of that so far, and man, these like two last two weeks, my my mind has been like even more scrambled than usual, and it's already scrambled. Uh, it's been a bit more than usual. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Next comment. I don't even remember if I answered or whatever <laughs> the comment I just read. So I'm like, oh, okay, let me just go to the comment that's right in front of me. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, on the same video, the Shupa Shops video. Or Kupa, no, Shupa Shops, I think. I didn't know the Mexican band Shupa Shops had a soda. I believe it's a Mexican company. They sell Shupa Shops candy in Mexico and some parts of Arizona. And... I always thought that it was a British Portuguese company because they've had those things in like that section in like the British Iberian section whatever so it's like oh yeah you know Britain Portugal historical friends maybe that's something but then when I looked into it it's a Spanish brand from the 50s I think so yeah, it's it's a Spanish brand, uh, you know, 
which I guess makes sense that they have expanded and probably are big in Mexico. Uh, let's see. D Hope 420. Okay, I have no idea what this means. And this on this is on my Let's Play Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness Part 9.5. Master Bator Jap Japonasis Japonese Por Home La Boca de la Verita Mouth of Truth. Should I buy it? If you think that it looks fine, go for it. Uh, I mean when I used I mean I haven't used any of these in probably more than two years. I've not used any. Like masturbator in like two years. I haven't even used the one that I got from uh, Big Shot yet because I haven't bought, you know, water based lubricant. Uh, but yeah, um, it is, I like it because of how gentle it is. So if you want a gentle one, I would recommend it. And uh, let's see. Okay, here's a comment on Let's Play Spec Ops The Line Part 1 by Lazul. The length of this game was spot on. The story had something to tell. It really was an experience that came out around a time that nobody fucking expected. Everyone was busy consuming the typical crap, Call of Duty Battlefield, etc. Typical narratives and then this game which looks exactly like these other games previously mentioned comes around and hits people with its themes and ending. Maybe you didn't f maybe you didn't felt it in the same way, but around that time it made its mark as an underrated gem. Gameplay wise, it's okay. It's fairly easy. Its replay its replay value is getting the other endings. If you only got the ending you were satisfied with, it ain't worth replaying. Overall, a nice experience. Well, I would say the overall experience was nice. Um, I mean, the overall, like, thoughts and all that of the story, like, the story was okay. Like, I liked that it ended up being that, well, we were pretty much, like, the Americans were pretty much the bad guys in this. You know, and also, you know, the CIA doing all this shit. And us actually just playing into them. And, uh, yeah. I uh, fuck, I don't remember who told me, but they, they said, like, uh, there was something like, ah, uh, the game played with the fact that you, as a player, when you first arrive at the game, you get, like, they say, like, oh, we're gonna, you know, fuck, I don't know, like, what you should do, morally, I guess, or what the game, like, is the fact that you just turn the game off as soon as you start it. You like you don't engage you know to to move forward because you know the game is using the whole thing like uh like a brainless soldier that will just follow the arrow in front of them. The concept of that is okay. But this is a game that you pay money for. So that's the thing like it's not like a real life scenario. This is like a video game. Uh, so even if they would have given him an option like, oh, go back home or continue on with the story. Then when you go back home, like this is like in the first five minutes as your guys arrive to the scene and like, oh, OK, uh, we've seen this. Let's head back and report. If they would have given me that option, I probably I still would have said, "Oh fuck that, we're moving on," like because in the video game sense, I'm like, I'm not spending like five minutes just watching a cutscene and then turning the game off. Uh, I want to play it. Uh, but if that was a thing that they did, that would have been interesting and a little bit like, "Oh okay, that." Would have made, uh, I guess, the thing that they were trying to, you know, push in the fact that of just being like a soldier who's playing into this mentality of just 
following like the arrows and the objectives in front of you, not thinking about the consequences. If they would have given you an option to just head back home immediately after you basically did what you were supposed to do, was just arrive there, look around and be like, oh, okay, this is how it is. Let's return back to base and go home. Uh, but they didn't give that option, so yeah. So I think that fails a little bit of what their point was. Fuck, I don't remember who told me that though. Alright, let's see. That's Zul. On part 2 of Spec Ops. Lol, dying a lot, but it happens. This game is like Gears of War, where holding cover is really important. I've never played Gears of War. Nowadays, games have given up on most cover systems, which is kinda good because they're janky to implement. It's kinda annoying how you have to glue and unglue yourself from wall or barricade. Um. Uh, you know what? I feel like I both like it and dislike it. Um, I think it really works in a game like this that is supposed to be a little bit more realistic. Uh, without being like completely realistic. Because I, I don't know, I wouldn't want to play like a super realistic where like, ah, oh, you get shot once, you're, that's over. You know, like, ah, oh, you're fucked. Um, but I like that it... It is still like, oh shit, you need to take cover. And it's really good for immersion, I think. Um, so I really think it really, really depends on uh, what they want to get off with the story. Because I think the... And also the... The kind of atmosphere they want to put on the game. Yeah, because when you use like a cover-based system like that... It is a lot, it makes it feel like way more intense versus, you know, non cover based system games. And then Lazul on part three. No, Andreas, that's not a lot of ammo. It's the German 417 marksman rifle. Oh, okay. So it wasn't a bug. Because in the game, you get like a rifle, and where it, where the ammo counter is, it says 417. I was like, holy shit. Is this like a super gun that I just found that has a fuck ton of ammo? Because one thing also like about Spec Ops The Line is that you run out of ammo, so you have to just scrunch out weapons. You have to pick up, you have to use a bunch of different weapons. And yeah, I like that. Uh like forces you to be, you know, to resupply off the people you've killed. Uh, but apparently the gun is called a 417 marksman rifle, so yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Nobody. On review of my big old horse pussy. Friendship is plastic to hold masturbator video. The comment is. You are cringe. Okay. Uh, let's see. Lazul. Nice. Well, what would you feel cringe of that? Isn't, isn't cringe like secondhand. Well, I guess you could feel secondhand embarrassment. If you think. You know. Male, like sexuality, if you have like, I don't know, insecurities about your own male sexuality, I guess. Or if you feel like insecure about male sexuality, I could understand feeling cringe about health products. So I completely understand. Even though I, I don't think I ever felt like true cringe from something. Uh, let's see, nice Caesar haircut, not Caesar haircut, looking Roman. That was Lazul on my unboxing audacious sucking pro vibrator blowjob masturbator from Big Shocked. Um, yeah, I haven't actually done a haircut. This is still from when I, uh, what with when I had my mohawk, I 
cut, you know, here and just have here in the middle. I haven't cut or done anything since then. It's just this is how my hair grows. My hair grows fast. I have fast growing hair. And yeah, the only difference was that I didn't go to sleep as soon as I finished my shower. Yeah, because that's what I normally do. After a shower, I just go to sleep. And then my hair becomes, you know, a bit more messy. And I also did comb it. So I combed it and I didn't go to sleep. It's something I normally don't do after finishing a shower. Uh, but thank you. And YouTube actually gave me three options. Three pre-made answers. So let's say, hey, thanks. There we go. Uh, by Heku Maku. That looks like some ancient alien artifact on the same video. Uh, yeah, let's give that a thumb, a heart. And let's say, let's type. Let's hope it feels like one as well. I feel like if you were to have sex with a alien artifact, I wonder how that will feel. Hopefully, good. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Sveal is a nice catch. I don't know if I would want a bell toy. I think overall my party for this game would look very similar to yours. And that was on Let's Play Pokemon GXD Gale of Darkness Part 3, Six Tuplet Beatdown. And yeah, I love Sveal. Sveal is such a cool Pokemon. Way better than Seal. Or, and I like Walrein way better than Dugon. The problem was, especially in this game, is that, oh fuck, I think my Pokemon, at the time that I ended the Let's Play, I think they were like level 60 or something, and Sveal and, you know, Walrein did not learn a better water type move than Water Gun. Water Gun was the best water type attack it learned in the entire game. And that was like, oh my god, I was so pissed. Because, I mean, the reason why I had wall rain is that oh, I wanted good ice types and water type. You know, it's a water ice type. But by the end, I'm like, fuck, I, I can't have any water attacks on you because I have to. I'll, I'm just going to have, like, body slam, ice beam, icy wind, and I guess blizzard or whatever I had. Don't really remember the movesets I had. But, yeah. And then... I wondered, like, why is that the case? I'm like, oh, yeah. Because this is a Gen 3 game, and by that time, they expected you they expected you to have learned, or that you would have learned your wall rain surf. You know, as an HM move. The, th the problem was, this game didn't have surf as an HM, or a TM, or anything like that. So, yeah, they, and they didn't give wall rain a water type attack that I would learn by level up other than water gun then I think at level 80 something you would learn hydro pump but yeah you would fit you finish the game way before you're level 80 so yeah Agron is dope you are right Lazul on part 9 of XD Gill of Darkness and yes Agron is amazing also one of my favorite Pokemon I mean, Gen 3 has a lot of my, like, absolute favorite Pokemon, like Sveal, Aaron, and when I say those, I mean they're, like, evolutionary line. Um, I really like Torchic. I kind of like all the starters. I, I, th I think that's the only game that I like all the starters. Like I would say, like, I really like all the starters. And then there's a bunch of other Pokemon as well. But yeah. Gen 3 and Gen 1 are my favorites. Pokemon generations. Uh, when it comes to the Pokemon. I think if we're going to be honest. When it comes to the games. I think Gen 3 and 4 and 5 are like the best. Uh, let's see. What a shitty game. Flash game tier even lower. I know of Flash games that have better gameplay than this. And that was on my first look, Chicken Assassin Reloaded. And I agree. 
Chicken Assassin Reloaded was a horrific game. So, so bad. I think it's like a clicker game or whatever you want to call it. But man, was it ter terrible. Would not recommend. I wouldn't even recommend watching the video because the game is so bad. Uh, let's see. Man of Culture Moment by Richard Farn. That comment. Comment by Richard Farn. Man of Culture Moment. And that was on my big old horse pussy friendship is plastic two whole man's masturbator or male masturbator video. My review of that. Thank you. Man of culture. I've heard that a lot, but does that mean that they think like I'm I'm a culture like I'm a because what what does that mean when people say man of culture? Urban Dictionary. Man of culture is a weeb term that defines a person who enjoys things that are typically regarded with in weeb society. High opinion. Okay. Okay. Thank you, I guess. Thinking I have high opinions of, on something. Or that uh, my, my opinion this is of something of a high opinion. Uh, let's just say thank, thanks. Um, Lazul, I agree on channel update February 2022. Um, I don't remember what I said in that video, so yeah, so fuck, I don't know. And then the last comment was actually eight hours ago uh, by Lazul. Kipu was the hero at the end. And yes, the game was obviously rushed more than Colosseum. That's why the final guys start having so many shadow Pokemon. They just said, ah, fuck it, let's finish it. Which is alright. Short games are fine. But theme, story, music wise, Colosseum was better. Uh, but theme, story, music wise, Colosseum was just better. This ore generation was really cool, in my opinion. Too bad they never expanded more upon it. Pokemon Arceus finally did something different with Pokemon after so many generations, but the story is absolute dog shit. That is better to just rush out. Um, okay. I'm gonna double check quick who was Kipo. I feel like, if I remember correctly, Kipo was my... Gulpin, yes it was. No, Sw Swalot, Gulpin. Like, I don't remember what the actual name of that Pokemon. Let's see. If I type Gulpin, I think that's the... Yes, Gulpin evolves into Swalot, I think. Yes, that was the first time I've used that Pokemon and I really liked it. So, yeah, I like using like new Pokemon every when I play these you know, replay games and all that because you never know like I never give Gulpin like the chance and now when I decided to play this I gave it a chance and I really liked it how it turned out it really was the MVP with its toxic shockwave sludge water pulse like holy shit like move diversity uh, yeah so Good job, Kipo. Uh, okay, yeah, I agree. It probably felt more rushed than Colosseum. And I would also agree that the theme, story, and music of Colosseum was better than Gale of Darkness. I think Gale of Darkness had better gameplay, however. And I really liked the quality of life improvements they did to the, to the game. I mean, I wouldn't replay either Colosseum or Gale of Darkness. Uh, because I'm not really a man that replays video games a lot. In case, I'm pretty sure people have noticed that. Like, that's not something I tend to do. Because I have a limited amount of time where I have energy to even play video games. So I would rather play something new uh, than replay something. Uh, but. Really good. Uh, really good. Um. Yeah, if I were to choose a game to replay of those two, I probably would have chosen 
um, Gale of Darkness of Colosseum. Even though I think both games are good. And I do think Colosseum has better theme, story, and music. But when I think that if, when you're going to replay something, what's, what really helps with the replay, replay value is not those things, it's the gameplay. I think those things are like really, really good the first time you play something. Uh, yeah. Uh, but but then yeah, Pokemon Arceus. There we go. Um. Yeah, yeah Pokemon Arceus. Uh, the only thing I know about that is that I I did I saw him and Mori Luna play it. I actually watched some of her stream of her playing it, and I will say the game looked very boring to me. I thought it was pretty interesting in the way that you how you catch Pokemon and the gameplay and all that. Like that's interesting. I like I feel like if they would have done that type of thing, you know, when that is how you find Pokemon, you know, like all that and you have to actually throw the Pokeball and you know like I think that's really interesting. Uh and cool. But then they decided uh oh, let's remove like trainer battles we're gonna remove all this thing like what the fuck like if this was just a regular pokemon game but like when it comes to like oh you still have to you know defeat gyms you have to travel across the region defeat the elite four or whatever but as you travel to town to town this is how you do it you know like, through a third-person, you know, like, open-world adventure game, whatever. That would have been really cool. But they decided, ah, no, that is the only thing we're going to do. And then it's just going to be a bunch of random Pokemon battles. So like, oh, God, no thanks. That is horrific. The only thing you have to do in the game, I guess, is catch Pokemon. Yeah, no, like, I, when I, I, was, I was watching that, like, oh, God, that is really, really bad. So boring. Uh, and it also looks bad. I mean, I'll be honest, the game, all that, it looks horrifically bad, especially for the year it is. Um, that would be fine if the gameplay was good or if anything else was good. Like, I, I don't think, I don't even like the character designs. Uh, I don't mind if things look bad. I think the most important part when it comes to the visuals, I think it's probably the actual design or, and the art style. I think it's more important than the actual like animation qualities or whatever. Uh, but they failed in everything. Like, other than the fact that it's like Breath of the Wild, I guess. In how you move and all that. Obviously, they they're using that system. Uh, I think that's probably the only positive thing. Yeah, no, Pokemon R system seems shit. Yeah. Yeah, and that is actually old. <sighs> Uh, that is all the comments. Let's see. I'm going to go back even more. Yeah, I think I've actually answered. Yeah, there was actually some comment, um, which I think I've answered in other videos all that. It was something about like uh, horror games. And yes, as soon as I finished Jedi Fallen. Okay, it's called Star Wars The Jedi. The Last Fallen Order, something like that. When I finish that game, which I am starting to like, the last couple parts, I really like that game. As soon as you find out who the actual identity of the second sister, you know, Trilla, the game really wraps up in enjoyment. Not only in the story sense, uh, which is still like, eh, but the gameplay, yes, because of, you know, the powers now you can do and all that stuff. Uh... It gets a lot more enjoyable. <sighs> yeah.
Yes. So when that is done, I'm gonna look through my games that I have and see, okay, what horror games do I have? Because horror game genre isn't really something I have a lot of games in. It's not something I, I ever felt, ah, you know what? I'm gonna look to get a horror game. I think most horror games that I have are from Prime Gaming, Amazon Prime. Um, because like I said, I have no interest in buying any games. Um, yeah, if it's not like a humble bundle where like, oh, you know what? That is really, really good. I'll, I'll get the game. Uh, you know, in saying that, actually, let's look at Humble Bundle. Uh, let's see what they have at the moment. Bundles. Oh, let's see. Epic Game Store Celebration. The one game bundle. Nope. Three. Nope. And the seven. Okay, for 1329 euros, you could get Saints Row the Third Remastered. I liked Saints Row the Third uh, when I played it. Uh, I don't think I would ever want to replay it. So, Kingdoms of Amalur Re Reckoning, another game that I kind of enjoyed when I played it. I would not want to replay it, however. And then Mortal Shell is like a Dark Soul y. What is that genre called? A dodge fighter? What is the genre of Dark Souls? Okay, yeah, no, nothing that I have any interest in when it comes to games. All right. Um, but then I'm talking about Amazon, yeah. So I'll probably just look at all the games I have, not only Amazon, but on Steam and all that, and just see, okay which one of these are horror games um, oh that's because it's going from the newest I was like wait a minute yeah I know it says observer uh, like Less than observer underscore is like a like a fear thing. And then I have layers of fear and all that. So I mean, I do have a few horror games here, um, and I probably would do a lot of first looks on some of these horror games um, instead of just a completely let let's play. So that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to do first looks. And if it, there is a horror game that's like, ah, you know what? That is not... If I, as I'm doing the first look, I'm like, ah, you know what? This feels like I want to continue playing. Then I'll do a let's play of that horror game. Otherwise, it's just going to be a bunch of first looks of horror games. I think that's a good thing to do. Because then it would make me actually play the horror games that I have, more than just one, and, you know, in case I like one, I'll continue playing. Yes, that's the plan. Goodbye.